away from Providence, Rhode Island in the Minute with Mary studio. Welcome to the Potterverse. It's a podcast dedicated to the book and film universe of Harry Potter. So grab your favorite wands and time turners. Let's step into the night and pursue that flighty temptress adventure. Hello, everybody, and welcome back. My name is Mary Larson. My name is Blake. Sure is. And there is no way, no way I'd be making a Dumbledore's army. Wouldn't happen. Meaning you wouldn't be naming it Dumbledore's army, or you wouldn't be creating a group that would be fighting against no, the Dark Arts? No, I wouldn't do it, because it, it'd, be like, it'd be like one of those things that I, I got to read the room here. I got to read the room. Okay. And I got to know who's in who's in power. And I know that it's it's Dolores, mm-hmm. and I'm totally going the Malfoy route. Absolutely, there is no way I'm just being like, yeah. I mean, it's... I mean like, I'm very much one of those people that's like, that's like kind of, ah, uh, who cares about what the man says? But at this point, my in 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 the whole book, I'm reading the room, so. That's all. That's all I'm going to say about that. I mean, you're just being your typical Slytherin self, ready? <laughs> like self perseverance yep. oh, and yeah. just protecting yourself, not worrying about other people. No. Nope. But maybe would you be secretly trying to study some of this stuff? Yeah, oh yeah. I mean, if I thought it was best for me, then I would do it. But I wouldn't be like, let's make a group so I can teach everybody. Like, I don't care. Oh, my gosh. Whereas he's talking to me, his wife, who's the complete opposite. I'm just like, is there any way I can make a group out of any situation that I'm in? Please and thank you. (laughs) If something that I love and I'm interested in does not already currently exist, I will headline that group for sure. Bye. Like, I created an acapella group at my university because there was no acapella group. Yes. And we named it After Hours because we would meet. (laughs) late at night and we'd sneak into music rooms because I used to know how to pick the locks to get into the extra sneak to do acapella yes Okay, so there are like these two, <laughs> these two piano rooms that you Guys, that were always break locked. The rules and go sing. And they were giant That's, what is this, rooms. Footloose. Yeah, and they were giant rooms that like regular music majors weren't allowed to use because they had double <laughs> pianos, and they were only supposed to be for piano students. But I knew how to pick the lock with my card, oh. so I would meet in there, and I could fit all eight of my acapella members. But we would have to meet late, so nobody saw us. So we called ourselves after hours. <laughs> You're such a dork. Yep. <laughs> And then surprisingly, the group didn't continue on after I graduated. Yeah, I wonder why. We had a fun few years, though. Oh, a fun few years. Just like goodness. Dumbledore's army probably doesn't continue on after Potter. Oh. After everything. Everyone becomes part of Dumbledore's army. Well, we are so excited. Oh, you know, whether or yeah. not you would have headlined this group or you would have been a member, maybe someone casual who would visit or or if you would have been like Blake and just kind of sat this, sit this one out. Yep. Know Let you do you. There are no Slytherins in Dumbledore's army. I totally would have been Aaron Burr. Just like, you know, like from, from uh, Hamilton, from Hamilton. Mm-hmm. Just like I'm going to let you guys talk and do all you. I'm going to wait. We're going to see what happens. We're going to see how all this shakes out. Yeah. <laughs> You do you, Blake. You do you. I love that. All right. So this chapter, of course, is chapter 18, titled Dumbledore's Army. Friends who are watching live, let us know. Would you have been a part of it or would you have waited on the sidelines with Blake as well to see how it goes? And the quote that we're going to do. Right, said Harry when she sat down again. Shall we get practicing then? I was thinking the first thing we should do is Expelliarmus. You know, the disarming charm. I know it's pretty basic, but I found it really useful. Oh, please, said Zachariah Smith, rolling his eyes and folding his arms. I don't think Expelliarmus is exactly going to help us against you-know-who, do you? I've used it against him, said Harry quietly. It saved my life last June. Smith opened his mouth stupidly. The rest of the room was very quiet. But if you think it's beneath you... You can leave, Harry said. Smith did not move, nor did anybody else. Snap. That's totally Mary right there. <laughs> if you don't think it works, go ahead and leave. <laughs> Do- Doa works both ways. Goes in and out. <laughs> yes. Oh my goodness gracious. Oh Yeah, man. that's why I chose that one, because I was like, oh, you're gonna you're gonna come at me? Thinking this spell isn't worthy? Oh, nope. Man. It's my favorite spell, first and foremost, <laughs> and I used it on Voldemort last summer. So you're welcome. This may save your life, too, Zacharias Smith. All right. So on that note, Ready let's to get, get into, into the, show? the show. All right. Let's do it. 
I solemnly swear that I am up to no good. As I said earlier, this is the chapter 18. Little recap for you with what happens in this episode. Um, Harry has more dreams of that corridor with the door at the end. Dobby is this beautiful, sweet little hat sock upon sock upon sock upon sock elf who tells Harry about the room of requirement where Dumbledore's army can meet and of course the room of uh, the Dumbledore's army meets for the first time has their first practice session and gets named Dumbledore's army thanks to the brilliance of one Ginny Weasley yes that's that Mm -hmm. oh yeah Ginny all right Marvin um what do you think here? Where do you want to begin with all of this? Uh, I mean, like, I know we kind of joked about I, how I would never do the Dumbledore's army thing. Uh, and I definitely would not have. I, I think one of the things that surprises me is that this is actually a chapter that I thought would be a lot bigger. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's really not. It's actually, it's it, in context, it's quite small. Uh, and it, like, there's stuff that happens. But, you think this chapter's small? Yeah, I do. I do. Like, I think it, it's pretty. I mean, it's I said, a twenty-page, twenty-two-page chapter. Well, in context, like in my book, it's only like five or six pages. Oh well, your book is different. I know, but I'm just saying in context because, like, there are okay. other chapters that are like way longer than this one. Okay. Uh, and I was just, I was just like, wow, like I thought this would be a lot bigger. I don't know. Just that, that's just me. I don't know. So where do you want to begin with this? Uh, at the very beginning, it's, it's a very good. Can... It's a very good oh, place. Very to good start. place to start. I Whatever. need to educate you on all things sound of music. It's the like worst. my goodness it's gracious. The worst. So once again, I know we said it in the last episode, but the first book, pages wise, was already done by now. We are up to page in my book, page three hundred and seventy four, mm-hmm. and it is only Wednesday, October eighth or ninth. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> and I know you said this last last episode, Mary. Like where we are in the book physically, we would have finished. It is not Halloween the yet. The Sorcerer's Stone. It is not Christmas yet. They haven't even played their first Quidditch game. <laughs> <laughs> and we are chapter eighteen, page three hundred and seventy-four. But we needed all of this yes. because you know we don't really spend too much time with Harry over the summer. But Cedric just died, and we need to fully understand the emotional bandwidth and and place of where Harry is right now. We also need to understand where the ministry's at and our loathing of Professor Umbridge yeah. and how really curious the situation is where even adults like McGonagall yeah. are teetering when they're around Umbridge. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that we we need all of this information, but I think it is a riot that we are this far into the book which would have been longer than the Sorcerer's Stone, and they haven't even played Quidditch. Right, right. And, <laughs> you know, I, I think that one of the conversations that we repeatedly have uh, for this book, and I think this book in particular, is the differences between the films and the book. Mm-hmm. And I think, Mary, there are two things that happen in this book. One of them the book does better at, and then one of them the films do better at. And I we we talked about this actually while you were falling asleep one day, and I, mm. I I'm not sure if you remember. Probably not. But Sleeping Mary comes up with some nuggets of. <laughs> oh, oh, oh man, Sleeping Mary, oh that Sleeping Mary comes up with stuff that is like bad LSD trips. Yes. That's the <laughs> that's what that is. So, uh, Mary, I think. So what did I say in my sleep, Blake? That well, was so no, no, poignant. no. We 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 were discussing it, and but. Uh, Let's talk about the first thing I think that this book does better than the films. And there is this moment where Peeves is actually over the kids as they're talking about the plans for Dumbledore's army and they're and they're discussing it and they're figuring it out and he's throwing ink pellets oh, he's over them. The worst, yes. And they have to like hold their bags above their heads and you know Peeves is floating over them and then like just casually putting the bags down when he mm-hmm. when he moves away. I really like this visual because this gives you the, it still gives you the wee Hogwarts feel that you kind of still want, even though we've pretty much graduated away from that in terms of these books. 
I wish that something like this was included in the film. Um, to add that whimsy. I feel like that's what... Um, yeah. I, I felt like that's what um, the flying on the broomsticks was. Okay. A bit of that whimsy. Yeah, but... There are but I appreciate what you're saying in regards to school. Yeah. And it's it, difficult because they've been at school now and this is their fifth year. So sure. there's not tons that's going to be new for them or kind of that magical wow factor. Yeah. We get that when they go to Hogsmeade, you know, his first time. And um, But I appreciate what you're saying where it's like there's still little things about Hogwarts that can keep you on your toes, that yeah. can add that little magic. Well, that's where I think the author gets it right because there are... There are things that happen at Hogwarts that simply cannot happen anywhere else, right? And this whole scene with Peeves throwing the ink pellets, that's one of them. You can't take this scene and put it in school ties, right? Mm -hmm. Like you just, yeah. you can't do it. And you can't take a scene in school ties and put it in Harry Potter. It just doesn't translate, right? Uh, and for those of you younger listeners you will have no clue what school ties just, is just nod your head just say yes sure okay yes school ties. old person blake <laughs> i know but for you older <laughs> listeners you'll remember brendan fraser and matt damon we're not and the whole older thing. we're just well seasoned yes that's well right. marinated um and i think that the author gets this right because there are certain characteristics that just can't happen anywhere else and i like the fact and i i wish the fact that the films still kept this because it's so uniquely we Hogwarts and I and even though th this is my favorite film even though I, I just I still need a little bit of that magic we've got um, some friends joining us live we've got Rachel and we've got Angela Angela who's reading this book for the first time and she's now um, almost almost done with this book and who is loving it oh, okay. uh, Rachel Great. who says that this is one of her favorite books because of these reasons and so I, I hear you Blake you know yes this book is is thick it's got a lot of a lot in it so far in these said. 374 <laughs> pages, mm -hmm. but I like that we're still able to have that whimsy. Yeah, even and, if it's through peeves. But I will say this: the film does better in one area of this of of this chapter than the book does, and maybe we could start there, Mary. What the film does better is that it has Neville discover the room of requirement. Oh, see, I disagree, and. I love the fact that, number one, it's Neville who does it because he's so worried and he's like... This is what we were talking about as I was falling asleep yes. and I was fighting for Dobby. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So Dobby, for those of you who don't know, is one of my top three favorite characters of the series. It's Hagrid, Hedwig, and Dobby. In that You're a order. wizard, Harry. And I think that the the author's obviously able to delve into, spew, love it or you know, hate it or leave it, or both, that's the Take same thing. Take it or leave it. There Thank you. you. Take it you. or leave it, spew. And and having Dobby come leave through. It, by the way. Always <laughs> come throughout it. these series. <laughs> Always leave I spew. think it makes it so much more impactful with what ends up happening with Dobby's fate. And the reason that truly totally he, he wanted to be there for Harry. So I love that Dobby not only knows about the Room of Requirement, but understands how to make it open. The Room of Requirement has to be walked by three times and you have to be very clear with what you're looking for now Dumbledore brought this up in the last book but nobody really knew what was going on sure and other people you know Fred and George talk about how they were here hiding from Filch one time and I love Neville but to me I don't think he could have figured this out that oh I have to walk by it three times whereas Dobby the house elf who really knows the inner workings of this magical castle would know this of course yeah so I think that it's fitting. I also love that Dobby is the one coming around. Granted, Spew is not portrayed in the the movies. And Thank I'm going to bring you back, Blake, books are the books and show is the show. Yes. So we're going to stick with that. Yes. But I love that Dobby gets to have this one-on-one -on -one time because Harry is so alone. Hagrid is not here for this school year. Mm -hmm. And Sirius now really shouldn't be coming back for, through the flu network. And aside from the trio, Harry doesn't have any. Dumbledore's ignoring him. And so I love that he still has Dobby. He has Dobby and he has Hedwig. Yeah, but here's what I'll say on that too. 
continuing the idea of isolation for Harry, mm-hmm. I think it's better that he doesn't have Dobby. Well, someone has to find the room. Yeah, and, and I think that's it's why, why it's Dobby brilliant that it's Neville. Of all people, it's Neville. In the Neville. movie, but we're book is book, well, show is show. But that's why I'm saying the, I think the film does this better than the book because Harry is not, if we're going to compare it to the book, Harry thematically is not supposed to have anybody. He's not. He's supposed to be isolated. It's what that's what's supposed to be driving his his momentum as a character, and then for Dobby to just step in intentionally and be like, "I'm gonna save the day." Here's the room of requirement. I just I find that to be lacking. I I think that's a. I don't cop think out. it's lacking. I think it's lovely that he still has glimmers of hope because Harry's not gloom and doom all the time, especially in this chapter because Cho tells him well, that she yeah. she was distracted by his presence. So we need to keep in mind that this is a 15-year-old boy mm-hmm. who doesn't completely see the world as a glass half empty, that there are glimmers of, of happiness and Dumbledore's army is, I think, that big shift for him, right? And we all had that where it's like the no good, terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day where you're just getting every Everything smacked in your face. Mm. And I think Dumbledore's army is what changes the direction for Harry in this book. He's able to use his sure. skills and his background for good. And things are just kind of on an upward swing for him for at least part of this book until yeah. things go downhill. Um. <laughs> and, and, and Casey here on Facebook says, I love the magic of the room of requirement. And that's also kind of why I like Neville discovering it in the film, because it's almost accident. Well, it is. It's accidental, and it is. It's more that Hogwarts. It, it's you know, would I, I actually have? I think a, a valid point here. I know, but you're just such a stickler for book is book, show is show. I, I know. I'm just saying. I, <laughs> but this this podcast is is discussing the book and the film. So like, I love, and I also said too. I love that the book does the thing with Peeves, but at the same time, I like the fact that it's Hogwarts that reveals the Room of Requirement to Neville, as opposed to Dobby revealing the Room of Requirement to Harry. It's almost like Hogwarts is, they even say it in the film, it's almost like Hogwarts wants to help us. And I just like that. We've throughout this podcast, we've looked at Hogwarts as like this entity of its own. That, just like how we talk about how Outlander is its own character, Hogwarts is its own character. Well, yeah, well, Scotland is its own character. Oh, so yeah, sorry. That have, that's okay. I got you. You know what I mean, Scotland. Yeah, I, yes. I, I, and I, I love you. your point. Sorry, what? Oh no, I know. I love your point. Oh, thank you. You're I welcome. Appreciate, I appreciate that. Thank Maybe you. that makes you stop talking about it. If oh I my god. <laughs> 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 All right, Mary. All right, Mary. Fine. Go ahead. It's your podcast now. You oh my do God. what you want We should do. make you like a I Love Neville shirt. You're so proud of him. Oh. <laughs> no problem. No problem. You, you go I'm... ahead. No, you go ahead now. It's your podcast. <laughs> no, it's not. You know what? Hold on. I'm, I'm just going to put you. Fun fact. What? I'm just going to put Fun you right on the camera. that this book. Uh, was... I'm not even going to have a camera on me anymore. There's no point. This book was na- was originally named Dumbledore's Army. Harry really? Potter and Dumbledore's Army. Really? Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yep. And then it got changed. So I just think that that's a really fun thing. Um, we do get some of the extra whimsy that you were talking about, the wee Hogwarts in class, mm-hmm. when they're doing the charms of Silencio. Yes. And Ron just has, he's just not the greatest at <laughs> charms. And he cannot make his... his um, Frog or No, was, at first it was the raven. He can't make his raven be quiet. Yeah. Um, and he's saying, ravens are harder than frogs. Fine, let's swap his Hermione. And she swaps it and still he can't he can't make it quiet. Uh, they get all of this um, extra homework, of course. And then they get their word that Quidditch is back on. You okay? Yeah. No, so my, my computer's like freaking out, but we're okay. Okay. It's fine. Um, then they get the word that Quidditch is back. So being an athlete in school yourself, my love, mm-hmm. how would this have made you feel? I would have been pumped. I, I would be ready to go. I'd be like, "Yep, let's go. I'm I'm in on let let's play some let's play Quidditch or whatever it is that I'm playing, you know, for that." I I think that it's probably one of the only things I would have cared about uh and not worrying about any of the other crap. Like it's just like, "Okay, Umbridge is is getting on everybody. That's that's great for her. I just want to play Quidditch." Mm-hmm. Let me just do that. 
and I'll be fine. So that's how I would have felt about that. And it's terrible. It's terrible weather when they do get out there and he has to do the sloth roll technique and they get to use the special charm that keeps the water off of their goggles so they can try to see. And I love when we get to be out in the Highlands weather because, of course, Scotland is depicted in the Scottish Highlands, which uh, for our patrons at jointhenerdclan.com. Oh, shameless plug. Those of you who are at the level that you are able to get a holiday gift, Blake actually drew a beautiful picture of the Scottish Highlands with Hogwarts in the the background yep. and uh, Claire from Outlander and her beautiful coat looking out over the Highlands. So great job, Blake. Oh, thanks. And I love when the author is able to depict the, the crazy weather that they have there as it does rain a lot and it is muddy and that doesn't necessarily stop people from going out. And I mm-hmm. think here, at least where we live in America, we do still have mixed weather, but a lot of times people are like, oh, it's raining, it's misting, it's foggy, like let's right, stay right. in. And for people who that is the weather more often than not, you got to suck it up, buttercup, and right. you got to go, and you got to fly, and you have to see how see how you fare. And you need to also practice in those kind of conditions because, as we know from their game, when they played Hufflepuff, mm-hmm. they still play in those kind of conditions, which sounds wretched if you're someone watching in the stands. That's oh. the day where you're like, I will, I will watch the recap. Right, no, we're all <laughs> set, Watches man. from home. We're all set. I remember I went to one of the Patriots games before I met you, and they were playing in the playoffs against the Titans. And it was like the coldest day ever recorded for a Patriots game. Oh my gosh, yeah. It was like, it was like minus yeah. five or whatever it was. And I was sitting in the nosebleeds. It was, it was, it was, it was torture. Like it was monstrous. The kind of elements that we had to, that we had to endure to mm-hmm. watch the Patriots. They won. They won. That's okay. I'll take it. They were playing Steve McNair. I'll never forget that. Oh. The year that he won the MVP. And they won. It was 2003? 2003, I, I think. I don't know. Yeah, it's okay. It's all right. It's all I right. got you. I got you. But while they're having this practice and the elements are crazy, Harry has the most mind-splitting pain than he's had yeah. in a very, very long time. Yes. So much so that he kind of like yelps out. And um, Ron, of course, knows what's going on. And he gives Ron this look and, and he knows, like, let's chat. Let's chat Voldy. And Ron gets excited for a moment because he says, you can read Voldemort's mind. Yeah. This is huge. You should take over Trelawney's job. This is amazing. <laughs> you know what's going on because Harry's able to kind of pull from this a feeling. Mm-hmm. And he's able then to de- able to deduce that when he was with Umbridge and he had a similar experience, that that feeling was more of joy, and that this one is anger. I love that Harry can make sense of the feelings, and he can say he needs something done faster. Because I think it works on multiple levels. One, it continues to isolate Harry, as we've talked about throughout this whole book so far. The author has done a masterful job at making Harry alone, Mm -hmm. making him feel alone, uh, literally and figuratively. But also, it helps at the same time connect Harry to Voldemort, a connection that he doesn't want, that isn't necessarily helpful, uh, and isn't really beneficial emotionally for Harry. It just makes him feel um, almost, it, my sense of it is that it makes him feel uh, like he has the scarlet letter a little mm. bit, if you know what I mean. Like it just, it feels like dirty almost. Like, oh God, I this is not good for me. I don't like this. You know, it's like, <laughs> it's like when you... When you see like a a big thing of candy and you're like, I got to have it and you eat it. And then five minutes later, you wake up from your sugar haze and it wrappers all over you. And you're like, oh, that was a great idea. You know, it's I love that you're equating this to candy. It goes to show you like how um, how blessed you are that you haven't had like lifelong anxiety or depression. Well, I was trying to keep, I was trying to keep it light. No, 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 I appreciate, but like, it makes me think of, because you've recently been ba- having bouts with anxiety over the past oh, not handful just of years. Well, but you know what yes. I mean? Like it hasn't been something lifelong. Um, and to me, this kind of reeked of 
anxiety outbursts when you're in a completely safe, beautiful, happy space. And then you have that day where you wake up and you're just anxious and you don't know why and you can't figure it out. You can't figure out what a source is. Or another one could be depression. Uh, I was just saying to you, oh man, out here, here Mm -hmm. here I am saying like, you know, the people in in the highlands are so hardy because they can put up with the crappy weather. It has been cloudy and disgusting here in Rhode Island for probably the past two weeks. And I was telling Blake, I said, I've been starting to feel blue and I think it might be uh, a bit of seasonal um, depression. I've I've been known to have it throughout my life and it usually starts more February. So if it's starting now, this is a little earlier than I would have liked personally. I, yeah. I could use some snow. That always helps. But I say this because if you suffer from, say, anxiety or depression or something, depression or something of the likes, it's so difficult when you're having a great day or you're totally fine and yet something inside of you feels off and you can't figure it out. And you sit there, you get upset because you're like, why am I sad? Everything in my life is great. <laughs> Nothing in right. my life right now should be making me feel sad and yet I am. And so that's what I feel when when Harry's saying this. You know, he's playing Quidditch with his friends. Yes, he's cold. Mm-hmm. Yes, he's wet. But Quidditch is something that he lives for. It's one of the things that makes him the happiest. So he's probably, you know, toweling off on this beautiful high of enjoyment and then he feels anger yeah. run through his veins and his body and how foreign that must be. That's uh, great. And then he's able to deduce how different this was from the previous one where it was butterfly joy. You know, so it just... That's how I, I I agree with you, Blake. How just having whether it's eating a bowl of candy and not necessarily being proud of that choice afterwards because then you feel sick yeah. or having these feelings of yours that may not necessarily have a proper source that you can deduce. Yeah. And I I think that this is also another way that the author is telling you that this connection is, it's more than just like we're, it's more than just a commonality, right? We're building towards something as a reader or as a viewer, you have to recognize that when a connection like this is introduced in your story, th- th- something is going to happen as a result of it. You know, you can't, uh, you know, we talk about Chekhov's gun all the time, right? Like, y- you can't introduce a gun in the first act and then not have it go off in the third. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I almost also kind of liken it to the connection that Ray and Kylo Ren share. Ooh. Where okay. in The Last Jedi, you know, obviously, you know, spoiler alert, it's being facilitated by um uh what the hell's his name? The Emperor? No, not the well, not the Emperor. The um The oh, Force? No, not yes, the Force. But uh what the, the hell Dyad? Is, well, they are a Dyad. Yes. What the hell is uh, what's his name's cat Snoke? It's being but facilitated Snoke by Snoke. The, Snoke was the emperor. Uh, yeah, I know, I know. But Snoke was his own being. He was a puppet. He well, said. Yes, correct. Anyway, what I'm saying is, listen, you're not sounding very strong in the Force right now. No, I'm not. <laughs> what I'm saying is this: that relationship is started in the Last Jedi at points. Land the, uh, <laughs> land the plane, Helen. <laughs> Thanks, Mary. At some points, it is introduced to you. And they are unaware or unable to control it. But by the end of The Rise of Skywalker, there is a payoff for that relationship when she's able to pass the lightsaber to him and then they're able to fight the Emperor. Hashtag spoilers. So I just, I, again, it's important that we have these kind of relationships and they pay off in the end. Like you have to deduce the fact that they're going, something is going to come out of this. Mm. So that's what I like. And this all brings up the memories that Harry had in the beginning of the semester when they were still at Grimwald Place, overhearing the plans. If he's got plans, plans he could put into operation very quickly. Indeed, stuff he can only get by stealth, like a weapon, something he didn't have last time. Mm-hmm. And so he's really starting to, you know, put some pieces together, but still it's very, <laughs> very, very vague. Mm-hmm. And Harry has to juggle this, has to juggle this newfound kind of insight into mm-hmm. what Voldemort's feeling in the midst of being a regular student, in the midst of having to catch up on Snape's extra work and Quidditch and people looking up to him for Dumbledore's army. And that's a lot. That would be a lot for any individual to have to deal with. Sure. Yeah. 
nonetheless a 15 year old so um he then he's then up late and he bumps into dobby and i know this wasn't a favorite of yours but that point is now dead the, the only thing that i like about out. this the only thing i like about this is that dobby is there saying tell hermione to stop doing this it's getting everybody angry. <laughs> Stop putting clothes everywhere. Well, Dobby comes because he's returning Hedwig, and Hedwig is very happy to be back yes. in the lovely arms of Harry, taking care of her, of course. We get a little update on Winky, which I know you don't enjoy Winky either, so we'll move on from there. And this is how <laughs> the Room of Requirement gets to be known with some great understanding and story. And I think that this is a safe person that Harry can bounce around this idea with, someone who really knows the, the school and he doesn't have to fear will rat on him. Mm -hmm. I think that's another thing, you know, um, we we always have to be concerned with other students and we're going to see that even in, later on in this book about who you can trust. And mm -hmm. um, I think that Dobby is an ongoing safe person for Harry to be able to bounce these ideas off with. Sure, sure. That he knows no matter what, he's team Harry. Th they're thick and thin. <sighs> You're yeah. welcome, Blake. I know, I know. Hey, how about how about Hermione kind of doubting Dumbledore's army now? Being like, I don't know if we should be doing this. And she says she doubts it because Sirius thought it right. was a good idea. Right, and this girl was all about the DA until Sirius it was steps her in. Idea. I know, and then all of a sudden <laughs> Sirius steps in and says, hey, that's a great idea. And she's like, yeah, no, no, we're, we're not doing that. Why? Why do you think she's, she's doing that? I think... Um, that Hermione is realizing that potentially this could be slightly reckless and knowing the fate that Sirius now has being locked up in Grimwald Place and alone and only being able to maybe speak through a fireplace, if he's thinking this is a great idea, it does... You, d you do want to evaluate a little bit more. I think that Hermione is someone who truly likes to think things through before mm -hmm. taking a big leap. And she took a big leap by bringing up the DA as an idea. And now it's her backpedaling saying, oh, before we actually get it started, let's make sure this is a solid choice. Now, of course, she's got the boys saying too late. Too late, yeah. sweetheart. That's like it. You, you already here. invited everybody to yeah. it. We're already into it. Can't put the toothpaste back into the bottle. Kick <laughs> <laughs> that is so gross. It's so true. Especially for us who, you know, we have an eight and ten year old. Oh, like, yeah. How do they squirt so much toothpaste all over oh the my place? Oh, God. Like, it's, Get it it's, on the brush. It's like it's like a whole, like, if you put four quarters side by side or like in a square, that's that much toothpaste. Just bloop, on the counter. All over the counter. Like, how, how is this Hermione's favorite scent? Obviously, she was an only child who didn't have to deal with toothpaste being left all over the sink. I, you know, I, I kind of, I'm kind of out on Hermione in this whole thing, with her. When are you ever in with Hermione? No, no, no. I like Hermione a lot. <laughs> okay. If this was JFF, now we're to, I'm always out on JFF because okay. he sucks. But I'm kind of out on Hermione in this in this choice because number one, it was her idea. Number two, I, it's almost like she's incapable of making the distinction between. Like the necessity of it, the necessity of Dumbledore's army, at least according to the, uh, it well it, through the lens of the of the kids and what they're trying to learn as self defense, but also what she interprets as, um, Sirius's. Well, let's call it you know stick it to the man attitude. Well, think about it. When she first came up with the idea, it wasn't against any educational decrees. Sure. They could easily meet in Hogsmeade. They figured, okay, let's see how many people are interested. We'll figure this all out. Then it became a big no and potentially expulsion. So when she first brought it up, the- Oh, worse. Expelled. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay, when she first brought it up, it was brilliant, but also there was nothing to be necessarily afraid of, aside sure. from like, ooh, we're doing something slightly naughty. Now this is very clear cut against the rules. You could be getting into serious uh, issues, and we all know that Hermione cares about her schooling and her grades more than she even does her life. Mm -hmm. So now that there are these massive things to be concerned about, and that they were having a difficult time even finding a place, I think that it was a realistic conversation 
conversation for her to bring up. Hey guys, is this actually going to happen? Should we really be seeing this through? Now mind you, when they find the room of requirement and they go inside and they see all of the different things, Hermione is all the way back in. Now yeah, that she knows that there is a safe place to meet, but I think she was just being realistic. Okay? okay, there's nowhere to meet. Now it's a serious offense if we get caught doing this. You've mm. got all these people excited. Who knows what's going to happen? But now that they have found a safe place, she changes her tune back to being, all right, I'm all in. Sure. What, what do you think about the paper trail of Dumbledore's army and the fact that they're like memorializing it, like for real? It That to me is not a smart choice. Like that, like that's something that now knowing the rule, now knowing the consequences of what you're doing. That you're going to have bo- like pimples all over you? Well, yeah, but like just the idea of having this paper. Oh, okay. And having proof that there is a thing and they're calling it Dumbledore's army of all things. I, my feeling is we should get rid of that. But there's no instinctual. I think it's just push. they're they're on such a high of pride and excitement that they kind of ignore that. By the way, said because once again she does put that jinx where if anyone does snitch that they'll have all the boils. Sure. So I think that in that moment they thought that would be enough. Okay. All right. Fair enough. They're 15. Yeah. Let's, good point. You know, good point. Let's just like like let's keep that forward momentum going and and stop listening to the little devil on our shoulder telling us why we shouldn't do something. Yeah. Yep. So of course they meet and they get all their friends there. They get all the Ravenclaws, the Hufflepuffs, the Gryffindors who signed on up, and they start practicing. They start, of course, with Expelliarmus. Cho gets all frazzled and is excited by being around Harry. Neville, oh, your new favorite person, gets to practice with Harry because nobody wants to practice with Neville. Oh, poor Neville. And what I love about this, though, is that, let's be real, if you only practice with the coach, if you only do group projects with the teacher, do you ever fail? No. Do you get wicked good? Yeah. Yeah. So this is probably for the best case for Neville, because if he was with someone who wasn't that good, he probably wouldn't have really become as strong as we need him to be later on in this book when he goes to help with Dumbledore. And I love this moment, too, that he has with Harry, where he's like, I did it! I finally did it! (laughs) And Harry's like, yeah, that's great! But I just want to let you know that your your opponent's probably always going to be paying attention to you, and I really wasn't. Internally, he's thinking that, right? Yeah. That's a great moment. Uh, for both characters, they they where uh, Neville finds a little bit of confidence, and Harry says, "I should, I can, I can hold back on that. Mm-hmm. Let the kid have the W." Yeah, I think that's great. <laughs> Harry walks around, and Zachariah Smith is being picked on by Fred and George, who Good. he's doing his jinxes. He's trying to do his Expelliarmus, but Fred and George are behind him, making him lose his wand. Yeah, and he had no idea what was going on. And George says, "Sorry, we couldn't resist." So I love that. Like they're picking on this guy, um, just just having a blast in the way that Fred and George would be doing, and then. Um, as I said, Cho kind of gets all sorts of nervous around her. Luna Lovegood speaks up in saying that her father is very supportive of any anti-ministry action. Um, he's saying he'll always believe. Um, so I, I like that they start to kind of get into these conversations of, you know, who like Joe starts to talk about it. Mm-hmm. Um, and she says after what happened with Cedric. So th- like the kids are having this conversation mm-hmm. that's needed to have happened at this point. I'm very much that kind of person that is like stick it to the man Mm -hmm. you know like yes let's rebel let's you know make sure that your voice is heard please like do all that you are entitled to that you are entitled to question everybody you're entitled to question the government you should right at all times that doesn't mean you know like i'm gonna do it personally (laughs) like I have the right to, and it's good to think about it. I'm probably never going to do it until it's until until I see how it's all going to turn out. Um, but I like the fact that there are these different kind that the book I think is showing different kinds of rebellion. Um, and this I think is a little bit more proactive a rebellion. But when you talk about Luna's father, or you know something of that ilk where it's or or even uh serious who says oh yeah this is a great idea you guys should totally do that 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm going to be over here, but you guys go do that. Uh, and the same thing with Luna's father here. I think it's important to do that. It, it's for for all of our listeners, especially the younger listeners, learn to question what is around you. Learn to question what people on TV or on the, or on the internet or Mary and I, what they say to you and how they present it because you need it. You, you need to do it. How you act on it is what I think changes from level to level. Uh, but it's important that we always do that. And it's important to have groups like Dumbledore Zombie. It is. It is. It absolutely is. I ain't going to do it. And they're so excited to be meeting that they want to meet even more. Of course, making room for, for Quidditch coming on up. And they pick Wednesday night, so a week from then. And Harry says goodbye, and he uses the Marauder's Map. The Marauder's Map oh, is used yeah. twice in this chapter. Yep. And we have our copy of the Marauder's Map here with us in the studio. It's one of my favorite magical bits. You were talking yep. earlier in this podcast episode about the whimsy and the magic that really happens in Hogwarts. And I love that Harry is still able to utilize such an incredible tool. And that is another thing that I think the movies did exceptionally well. Reading about it was so fun, but then really being able to kind of see how other people visualized this magical moving map yeah um is brilliant so he's able to make sure that everybody gets home safely <laughs> I, just, I was on instagram or something and i was i just happened to be watching a reel and somebody was like you know i would i just want to talk about this for years george and fred opened the marauders map and saw ron sleeping with a man named peter <laughs> pettigrew and didn't say anything <laughs> just Makes me laugh thinking about that. I mean, truthfully, they probably just were never looking for Ron. But yes. Yes. No, I yes. know. It's just It just makes me laugh. <laughs> and then the last thing I do want to bring up, Mary, is that little final bit between Harry and Cho, where Cho's like, oh, what do you think about this? And he's like, oh, that's great. Uh, actually, no, that was terrible. But, you know, we'll, we'll keep working on it. Like, yeah. It's such a, a, a nervous little, <clears throat> like, interaction that you could totally imagine – these types of kids having mm -hmm. uh and it's it works so well with the characterization for both he and show i love it love it all right got anything else you want to talk about no are right, you ready for your different perspective i am all right let's do it holy cricket you're harry potter i'm hermione granger and you are dobby the house elf sir dobby <laughs> i heard you were talking smack anyway so it's me <laughs> What's That's why on? Mary picked me. That's what's going. You know, Dobby. I feel like you're kind of useless in the chat. Oh my and goodness! In fact, in fact, I would argue. Am I going to need to leave? You, that you take away from the story. Not in this only chapter. am I so important to Harry Potter, but he named his group after me, the DA Dobby's Army. <laughs> Dobby's army, isn't that you know, so great? The I, magnificent I Harry Potter. I don't think that's how it went. I am so happy I was able to help him. If it weren't for me, you know, there was a guy me, named Dumbledore. He wouldn't be able to have found the room of requirement. Yeah, and all of his friends, all of Harry Potter's friends, now they get to practice. <laughs> and I will go and I will pick up all those pillows and I will clean up after them every time because Dobby's a good house elf. And what do you think about her mind leaving all them clothes? I feel like that's you know a little bit of an insult. I have. A bad circulation in my, <laughs> in my feet and in my hands and it is amazing I love it I wear different ones different days of the week <laughs> Dobby's very happy very it's happy sir <laughs> end scene how could I not pick Dobby after you hated on him <laughs> <laughs> I have bad circulation. In in a Mary and Blake media first, I lost my headphones <laughs> laughing so hard. You're Harry Potter. Oh, oh man. You're welcome. The end. Oh, I think I I think I actually broke my headphones. Hold on, let's see if I can fix it. Hold on. We also had um, an email come in, my love. Yep, absolutely broke my headphones. That's okay. Oh, there we go. I fixed it. Okay, good. Did you see the email that we had? Oh, my God. Circulation. That was ridiculous, Mary. That was so funny. All right, hold on. We had an email from I, Taylor I, Johnson. I, 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 got all, I got all this stuff. Hold on. We, we got oh. a whole process. Okay, well, you're the one with the broken headphone. Well, Losing it over Dobby. Well, it was wicked funny. What do you <laughs> want me to do? All right, here we go. Oh, Miles' head. All right, here we go. 
This one, I get the emails and questions here. All right. This one comes from Taylor. Taylor says, Mary. <sighs> Mary? Were, no. If you were to make a spell, what would it be for? Love the podcast. Oh, uh, thank you, Taylor. Ta- uh, Taylor, thank you so much, Blake, Mary. Do you have an answer first? I do. Tell I do. Me. If I were to make a spell, it would be for all the cat litter and all mm. the dog poop to go away. <laughs> <laughs> the amount mm. of poop I touch <laughs> on a weekly basis rivals that of Grover and Percy Jackson episode three. Oh my three. god! <laughs> it needs to go away. It it just it needs to go. I wish it could just evaporate. You know, I may double that as my wish as well because the poop is Blake's job. So when I see the poop there, ooh, <laughs> it's not good. Marvin, you are more than welcome to help with the cat litter. Mm-hmm. As a matter of fact, I remember that being a, being a contingency when we got the cat. Well, we first got cats, and then I was pregnant. I agree a lot. But, uh, but for years. But you're no longer pregnant. That's you are. You are. You and are I bought able. The automatic cat litter thing, and you won't plug it in. I understand. I I I, I hear anyway, you. Anyway, Taylor, that is the answer. <laughs> cat litter disappear cha- spell. As you can see, <laughs> that's all the Larsons want in this world. Not world peace. Not hunger. No. Not for the weather to be sunny, even though I would appreciate that. But for cat litter to disappear. Yes, please. Have it all disappear. Poop, poopy cat litter. <laughs> Pee cat litter. All of it. Or just train the cats to use the toilet. Oh, man. All right. All right. Yes, here Blake. we go. Uh, the next one comes from Joanne. She says, Hi, Joanne. Hi, Mary and Blake. So I've been listening to your podcast for two years now. I spent the first couple of months catching up because you are in book four when I first started to listen. Or maybe it was book three. I can't remember. Either way, I was telling my family about it over Christmas. My oldest daughter, daughter, who is age 23, made a point that I wanted to mention. I was telling them at how you all to refer to the author as the author. And maybe I missed it in one of your episodes, but my daughter said they really missed an opportunity in not calling her she who must not be named. Oh, wow. (laughs) My question (laughs) is, have you referred to the author in this manner? And I've just forgotten. There have been a lot of episodes to this point. And if not, despite it being a mouthful, why not? Thanks. Keep up the great work. Joanne from North Billerica, Massachusetts. North Billerica. Your cousin from Boston. No, I don't think we ever referred to the author as that. If so, maybe it would have been in episode one. Yeah. We actually would have never thought of that as a name as we have an ex-friend in our life who we refer to as she who must not be named. Yes. Because she's as scary as Voldemort. (laughs) Oh, God. (laughs) She was a scary person. She can be scary. Yeah. So- that is why. Th- that if Blake and I had to keep using she must not we be named. We would keep associating <laughs> the two. Yes. Uh, which, it's, it's neither nope. here nor there. Anyway. Okay. Anyway, that is what it is. <laughs> but we do util- utilize that phrase yes. in our In our repertoire. personal lives. Yes. Yes. This one comes from David. David says, hey, Mary and Blake, I finally caught up to you live and I Hi, freaked David. out with the most cheesy of grins. Tell us. When you answered my email Aww. and read it. But I also died laughing when you guys talked about fat friends because <laughs> you know we all have those yep. <laughs> also i wish more people in the world would be open to other people's opinions and be okay if i have a different opinion and in the in the middle but i love listening to you guys you make my day work uh, my work day amazing again i'm a truck driver who delivers food and stuff to restaurants Aww, and you make each stop and the drive from stop to stop much better i'm so glad we get to help bring you joy on your stops yes yes well david i i do want to say that is the in my opinion the ability to have a conversation that is the one of the founding principles of the united states of america we need to have conversations and give differing opinions and learn to listen that's true i agree what would you say learn to listen what (laughs) your headphones still broken (laughs) this one comes from valdis they say, hey, Mary and Blake, Valdis, a proud Gryffindor from whoop, whoop. Iceland. Yeah. Here. All right. Our little lass actually just wrote on her 2024 resolutions that a place she'd like to visit is Iceland. Uh, I thought she was going to put like Maine, yeah. Florida, Iceland. Nope, Iceland. <laughs> Goals. <laughs> Long time Harry Potter fan. Just started le- listening to podcasts in general about a month ago. Um, but I found the Potterverse about three weeks ago and finally caught up and became a member of the Nerd Clan. Oh my gosh, thank you. Uh, you were talking about tattoos a while ago, and I thought that was fun because I'm scheduled to get a Wingardium Leviosa tattoo yes. in a week. 
I'm a crossfitter, uh, a crossfitter, a uh, crossfit. Well, yeah, either way. So naturally, I will put it on my bicep. Hashtag lifting. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Anyway, just wanted to tell you that you make my day every time I listen. Aww. I cannot wait to watch you live from now on whenever I'm able oh, to Oh, I do love so. it. Well, we're going to be going live uh, more often and hopefully it aligns with the Icelandic time zone yes. as we are on the eastern side of the U.S., so it's pretty close. But this one comes from Sophia. She says, Hello, Mary and Blake. Did you know that there is approximately 600 students at Hogwarts School? Uh, and you know, just to let you know, I love the podcast. Thank you so much. And I've listened to all of your Potterverse episodes so many times I've lost count. Thank you from 11-year-old listener, Sophia. Hi, Sophia, and thank you so much. And 600 sounds just about right. Still, though, who are these other kids that yeah. Harry and Ron and Hermione never talk to? Good, especially if they're all full of JFFs. As someone who was voted the most friendly in her senior class, <laughs> oh my God. I would have made sure that they were mentioned. <laughs> and if the book was named Mary Larson. No, thanks. And the Sorcerer's Stone. All right, this one comes from Tiffany. She says, about a week or so before Thanksgiving, I found your Potterverse podcasts. Thank you. I have to say I'm absolutely enjoying them. I just made it through chapter one of the Goblet of Fire. After not having read the Harry Potter books for years, Goblet of Fire is still my favorite of all of the books. I'd forgotten that Blake has never read this book, and I'm excited to take this journey to find out what he really thinks mm. about it. I know you've made it through this whole book already as far as your where your episodes are now, but I still look forward to catching up with where you are now so I can sit in on some, if not all, of the following live shows. Yay. Hopefully I'll be caught up by the end of the year and can join you in the new year. Love it. I'd also like to add that because of your podcasts, I have finally decided to read through all of the books with my son and my husband. Yay. I'll be starting that in the new year as well. I'm really looking forward to that. Love this. I'm so wondering much. if my favorite book will change my read after my read throughs. It, it might. It might. Um anybody mine hasn't because we know mine. Because it's Lord of the Rings. Uh anyway, thank you for sharing your love of Harry Potter with the world. Mischief managed Tiffany. And uh, P.S. Blake Horcrux Juice, L-O-L, I love it. Thank you for that. I'm not a drinker, but if that were ever invented, I would definitely have to try it. See you when I catch up. Yay! I totally want to make a drink now. It's called Horcrux Juice. Hey, you can do it tonight. What color would you make your Horcrux green. Juice? Yeah, it's got to be green, right? Yeah. Would you make it bubbly, or would you make it like... Like I would make it one of those ones that like it's a big bubble on top and when you pop the bubble the steam comes out. Oh yes, I love that idea. I don't know how to do that. Whatever, but, we'll but figure I've it out. But I've seen it on TikTok or something. So <laughs> I want to give a thanks, of course, um, not only for our friends who've just emailed and of course everyone listening. You can email us at Mary and Blake Media at gmail dot com so we can read your emails on the podcast. But we do want to thank our friends who have taken the time to write a review yes. on Apple Podcasts. So wherever you listen to us, maybe you watch us live on Facebook or YouTube, or maybe you listen to us through Stitcher or one of the many Not other Stitcher anymore. I'm sorry, I always say Stitcher, but I mean Spotify. Spotify yeah. Um, or one of the many podcast apps. Um, of course, reviewing us and rating us in that particular app is important, but out of all of the podcast apps, if you have the time to head on over to Apple Podcasts to leave us a written review, five stars is awesome too. But if you take the moment to write a sentence or two, that goes so far. Yeah. It first and foremost brings Blake and I the most joy, and it's like a hug each time we read one. But also, this helps um, in the algorithm so more people can find the Potterverse podcast. So mm -hmm. if you haven't yet taken the time and um, you you find yourself with two minutes to spare, head on over to Apple Podcasts, search the Potterverse to leave us a written review. And I want to thank Monkeys zero eight one eight who said, "I love listening to y'all. Y'all are hilarious. I love Mary's different perspective. Thank can you, you can for y'all. You, do this you in a do. Southern accent from Tiffany, a proud Hufflepuff." Oh, okay. A Hufflepuff. A Hufflepuff. Yes, Blake. That, that's great. I love that for you. <laughs> <laughs> I do too. All right. So that was it. All right. You ready to close this bad boy out? I am. Let's do it. We want to thank you all so incredibly much for tuning into this episode of the Potterverse. 
But Blake and I want to let you know about a brand new podcast episode that is coming to you fresh from MaryandBlakeMedia.com. And if you're a fan of Harry Potter, you may also be a fan of the Percy Jackson series. So the Percy Jackson book series has been out for quite some time, and um, it actually just came out as a new show on Disney+. Plus. Yes. So our son, Reese, who is a 10-year-old fifth grader who's been reading the Percy Jackson series, is actually co-hosting this podcast along with me. So what we would love is for you to check it out. It's called the Percy Jackson Prophecy Podcast. You can search it in your podcatcher of choice, wherever you find the Potterverse. It's going to be there too. I will say that there is not a video component to it. So if you're looking for videos of us actually like on screen talking, you're not going to see that. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's on purpose. Um, I want to have a little bit of mystery when it comes to our little lad at such a young age, but he is excited to be delving into the world of podcasting. So if you yourself or someone you know likes Percy Jackson, we would really, really love for you to check out the podcast and also give us a rating and review in Apple Podcasts as well. That'd be awesome. All right. On that note, my name is Mary. My name is Blake. Mischief managed. And I have bad circulation. (laughs) That is awesome.